I'm Melly. And I'm Martin. And today we're at the palace. Not that palace, love. We're at Spiny Palace, just past Elgin in Mauritius. But it's very nice as well. For 500 years, Spiny Palace was the official residence of the bishops of Murray. Built in the early 1200s, it was at the very heart of religious power in the northeast of Scotland and had close links to political power too. Standing on the edge of Spiny Loch, it was surrounded by a thriving medieval settlement. Even in its ruinous state, it remains the best preserved medieval bishop's palace in Scotland. Built in the late 1400s to replace the earlier South Gate entrance, the East Gate would have been an impressive entrance through which to arrive. It was defended by a portcullis and two murder holes and would have been reserved for people of rank. Directly above the entrance portal is a stone panel which bears the coat of arms of Bishop William Tulloch who ordered the entrance's construction. Either side of the gate are rectangular buttresses which supported corbelled semi-hexagonal turrets. There are grooves in the top of these turrets which suggest they might have had a timber superstructure. The two flattened arches in the centre of the parapet conceal the two murder holes. These are small openings from which guards could defend the entrance. Hello. <laughs> On the left side of the entrance is the East Tower, better known as the Little Tower, and was also built in the late 1400s. It has four floors with narrow windows. The inverted keyhole type gun holes on the first floor are original and the wider gun holes on the ground floor were inserted in the mid 1500s. This tower probably housed the bishop's chaplain and other officials. The south range housed the original entrance into the palace and incorporates some of the earliest remaining masonry which dates back to the 1300s. The first floor would have had three windows. It is aligned east-west and was probably the palace's chapel. A recess which may have housed a stone piscina is clearly visible close to the location of the former most easterly window. This is where the altar may have been. The water tower was used for subsidiary accommodation. It was known as the water tower because it directly overlooked Spiny Lock. Its incredibly narrow staircase led to a single room on each floor, all of which had a fireplace and a latrine. In 1607, Spiny's parson lived here. It was later made into a dovecote.
The water gate, also known as the postern or back gate, was used by servants, workmen and others who weren't of a high enough status to enter the palace via the main gate. It gave access to Spiny Loch and was reached by a pend underneath the Great Hall. It's thought that the Great Hall was built in around 1500. It occupies most of the North Range, but because the ground underneath it sloped downwards towards the loch, it was built over a basement which was sunk into the hillside. It was the largest room in the palace, and there is evidence that an open gallery rang the whole length of it. The wooden floor was supported by corbels, which have been carved into representations of human faces. This hall would have been used for the entertainment of guests and public functions, with a withdrawing chamber for the bishop and his top table guests. The kitchen, pantry, bakehouse and brew house were situated adjacent to the hall, with cellars and the well house below. The well is 8 metres deep and survives today. The East Range had two storeys and was probably reserved for senior members of the bishop's household. Given its proximity to the East Gate, this could have been the keeper of the palace. It was a two-storey building. The upper storey has evidence of a fireplace and a latrine. The West Range's two tall traceried windows contain masonry dating back to the 1300s, suggesting that this structure may have possibly been the original Bishop's Hall. This range was later rebuilt to include a kitchen on the first floor above two rooms, one of which might have been a wine cellar. The basement was closed when we visited, but there would have been two cellars which would have stored salt, meat and other perishables, as well as wine.
St David's Tower was built in the late 1400s and was one of the largest tower houses ever to have been built in Scotland. It is named after Bishop David Stewart who commissioned the tower, however it wasn't completed until the tenure of Bishop William Tulloch in around 1480. The coats of arms of both bishops are displayed on carved stone panels on the outside of the south face of the tower. The wide mouthed gun holes positioned at the base of the tower were inserted by Bishop Patrick Hepburn in the mid-1500s. He also added his coat of arms to the panels. The tower stands 22 metres high and has five storeys which sit above a vaulted basement and was originally defended by an outer wooden door and an inner iron yet. The tower had two other entrances, one in the north wall at ground level which led into the basement and the other for servants. The Tower House would have been a spacious residence where the bishops could conduct diocesan affairs and entertain in style. On the ground floor would have been an entrance lobby and a porter's room with a latrine. A spiral staircase connected the floors. On the first floor would have been the bishop's principal room where he would have presided over his ecclesiastical and barony courts as well as entertaining his guests. This room would have been lit by large windows and heated by a fireplace. There were four more floors which were partitioned in two. The remains of the tower show there was at least one fireplace on each floor, however this would not have been enough to heat each level. There may have been other fireplaces in the missing walls. These have crumbled over time, which suggests that they had several small chambers within them, which would have destabilised the structure. These smaller rooms, some of which had latrines, were probably used as sleeping closets for the bishop and his personal household. A 1640 inventory of the tower lists 19 beds and 11 chamber pots. The first recorded re reference to Spiny Palace was in the late 1200s. From the mid 1300s, documentary evidence records many distinguished and royal visitors. Mary, Queen of Scots, stayed here for two days in September 1562 during her royal progress. From here, she went on to defeat the Earl of Gordon at the Battle of Corrakey near Huntley Castle. She was undoubtedly treated to lavish meals and fine entertainment but we're not sure what she would have thought of our dancing. Probably. Oh, fun dabby dozy. Off with their heads! Oh my word, oh, that's a lovely view. Okay, all right, I'm terrified. I've terrified the life out of myself today. But that's a stunning view. The palace survived many uprisings, including the Protestant Reformation of 1560 and the signing of the Covenant in 1638. 
However, in 1690, Parliament abolished episcopacy and the last bishop, William Hay, was deposed and removed, thus ending Spiny Palace's 500-year history as the residence of the bishops of Murray. And in the distance is Royal Air Force Lossimov, the Coe Lighthouse. And the last village is Lossimov. Julep Lighthouse. In the far distance is Black Isle. I'm not quite sure if this is River Lossy or or the Spiny Lock. What is left of Spiny Lock? If you've enjoyed this video, please click the like button and consider leaving a comment. It will really help our channel to get noticed. And if you're curious as to where we might go next, why not subscribe to our channel so you'll always be able to come with us on our adventures. You can also keep up to date with our news and antics by following us on social media. We're on Facebook and Instagram. Just search for at Two Bears Cottage. In the meantime, thank you so much for watching and we'll see you on our next adventure.